Hello everyone. Man, another long day at work. Worked on Saturday all day. But uh, wanted to make a video. Thing been, that's been going through my head, I just keep thinking about this Syria, Trump and Syria. This is my third video on it. Trump and Syria. You know, I was I fought my heart out to get Trump elected. I loved Trump. He fought. The man fights. And Almost everything about him I liked, and he, when he became president, when he was inaugurated, I was there January 20th and saw it. It was awesome. I was at the RNC. I was part of this, and I, I supported Trump and loved him. He was the first person that gave me national pride, that made me feel patriotic. I had never before felt patriotic or willing to die for my country until Donald Trump came along. Not that I wasn't politically aware, it was just so, such a hopeless case. There was just no hope. I knew globalists were running it, everything. And now we have Trump, and he, he was so promising uh, th the first months. And even though that the Ryan bill was a little bit of a disappointment, the Ryan health care bill, I didn't really blame Trump. I thought that was probably strategy. He, he, I mean, it really looked bad on Ryan. He, he shouldn't have as openly as supported it, but that may be as it may, uh, that was a little bit of a disappointment, but not a big deal. But this Syria thing might not be a big deal either, but it seems much bigger, and it also is much bigger. My, my biggest concern is, is that the, the horrible negative effect it had on his base. Look up YouTube videos dropping support for Trump. I mean, there's people out there doing it. I don't know how huge it is. And, and we can expect that. And some of these weren't real, and some of them were. And some of them will come back. But they were seriously bothered by this. I mean, it was against everything they believed in. And I don't think that it's even the bombing that bothers everyone as much. It's that we know, we YouTubers and awake people that are in the online community, we know this is a lie. We know without a shadow of a doubt that this is somehow a false flag or a setup one way or another. We don't know exactly how it's all the, the inner workings of it, but we know it's not real. Of course it's not. And I think that Trump was, is, was just totally, I don't believe that he's for this, he was just totally buffaloed and, and hoodwinked into supporting this by people like Jared Kushner, General Mattis, and others. You know, I have no doubt that these that General Mattis was wanted to do this. He thought it was important, and Trump respects him, his position, his credibility, and all that. But, and he he. He probably thought this way. I have no reason not to believe them. I have to act. Obama didn't act. I have to show that I'm a man of action. And he is. But I believe he was just flat out lied to and convinced into believing a lie. He isn't online every day like we are. He doesn't see everything. He is awake to an extent. How big of an extent, I'm not sure. He is awake. But he's not out there hearing what we're hearing every day. In fact, he hears, probably doesn't hear a lot of it because he's surrounded by neocons like Jared Kushner. Thank God they had the hashtag fire Kushner yesterday and Kushner at war today on Twitter. Because, and Ivanka, you know, I, I've always liked Ivanka. She was so good for the campaign. But it, it seems from what I'm hearing, you know, I don't have the whole inside scoop, and I'm open to comments, but it seems like her and Jared, I know they're, I know that Ivanka was a Democrat. I know she couldn't vote in the primaries for her own father because she didn't get it switched fast enough to Republican. In New York, you have to switch so far ahead, like almost a year, to vote in the primaries. So we know she's liberal. We know Kushner's liberal. We know his family's extremely liberal, and they're, and they're influencing him. And now, now, now it appears that Bannon is losing influence over the president, and Kushner is gaining it. That's bad. And then, you know, we lose Flynn. You know, who's left? Stephen Miller and Kellyanne Conway? You know, uh, I like Kellyanne Conway. I think she's loyal, but 
how much is she really awake? How much is she aware of? You know, I don't know. It's a concern I don't want, even though, even if Trump went to war, like I've said before, he's still better than all the other presidents we've had before him, all the way back to who knows when. So that's not the argument to be made. The, the thing is, is, is that I don't want him going down this path. I want him to stay true to his supporters and his, and his campaign promises. I want him to be more authoritarian than he is. That's the only way. You can't willy waggle your way into getting these 400 pound gorillas off your chest, these globalists. You have to start putting hair in the wall. That's the only way. You've got to start prosecuting people like Susan Rice and others. You've got to put them under oath and force them to lie. They'll lie, and then you got something. You know, you should, they should literally still go after James Clapper for lying to Congress. We have to prosecute. Stefan Molyneux said this a while back. The American people are hungry for justice, not revenge, justice for the elite. We see it over and over again. The common man goes to jail on a whim, but the globalist shills in Congress and in Washington never get prosecuted. That's a big problem. It ruins the fa our faith in the system. We have got to have some justice to show that the elite are not above the law. I just want to encourage everyone, don't back off your support yet. Criticize. We got to get it to the president. We got to be heard. We got to make our voices heard. But let's just hang in there, let's not jump to conclusions, and see what happens, and do everything we can in our power to do what we can to have a, a positive influence on the population and the president, both. That's it for now. Peace. And don't forget, subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a bit shitty comment if you don't.